What's up guys? In this video what I wanted to do is just simply show you guys the assembly process of one of these Caldwell Stinger shooting rests. I know uh, these are one of the different types of shooting rests out there on the market. I wanted this particular style shooting rest for the simple fact that I can put an AR-15 with a magazine on this with no issues whatsoever. Uh, currently I have got my Ruger American Gen 2 setting in it and you can kind of see just how well that it sets in here. And uh, I like it guys, it works out very well. Even without having to remove the bipod, I can use this rest. Now one thing about it is I did have to detach my sling from the rear stud simply to get that to set down in there properly, but that's no big deal. Typically if you're gonna use this for lining up a scope or testing the accuracy of a rifle, uh, you're not gonna necessarily need a sling on it anyways. Uh, but guys, just come with me in this video if you have one of these, if you're thinking about getting one of these, and, you know, this is just going to be me showing you guys some of the steps involved in putting one of these things together. I've been wanting to get a shooting rest that would work with both bolt guns as well as magazine-fed guns such as ARs. And this is what I picked up. And full disclosure, guys, this is not sponsored. I paid good money for this. So, with that being said, uh, what we're going to begin with is I'm just going to get it out of the box and we're going to start putting this thing together. Bear with me over the noise, I'm filming this in the basement. We've got some other stuff going on right now. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and get this out of the box. I've already began opening the packages. That's why you see the tape cut and all that. Follow your instructions on these. It's pretty simple, but if you get it out of order, you're going to end up having to take part of it back apart just to get things to go together the way they're supposed to be so be sure that you follow those and again we're just getting everything out of the box now here's the first box you can see here we have the rest itself well this is part of it anyway so we're just going to go ahead and get everything set out one piece at a time just to show you guys what all you get so let's set that over to the side and keep going. Looks like we've got some hardware, all kinds of knobs and other stuff. And here's the last of the boxes that are inside here. I think that this is the pad itself. Yeah, these are the pads that goes on the shooting rest. And then we have the stands. Let's get all this out of the way. Start getting this stuff out of the plastic and getting it together. All right, guys, I've got everything just kind of laid out as it's supposed to go. And I'm just going to begin putting it together. This is a spacer that is going to go somewhere, I believe, according to the directions in the back. Uh, just looking at the directions here, you can kind of see where it goes. Make sure that uh, you put this in. I mean, this is going to be a critical piece here as far as making sure this thing stays rigid. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the bolt in. And I've just set everything up similar to how it's going to go together. That way it make it just a little easier. I'm just going to run that up. You do get some tools supplied with the uh, shooting rest, you know, this Allen wrench. So we're just going to go ahead and use it. To get this together this is the rear adjustment it's going to go here let's just make sure that we're getting it oriented properly okay it looks like it needs to go in this direction and guys I figured that I would just take some time since I needed to put this together in the first place uh, just to kind of put it together on camera that way for any of you guys out there that have one of these or are thinking about getting one of these and you want to be able to get it put together and uh, you know this might just be something to help you so let's go ahead and just get everything started I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting things on camera as I'm doing this guys so just bear with me hopefully I won't fumble too much stuff but the main thing that I wanted out of a shooting rest as I mentioned earlier is one that would uh, I could use for bolt guns I know some of you guys have seen some of the rifle videos that I've been doing and I want to do some accuracy tests on some of those rifles. 
And in order to do that, I needed a little bit better platform than what I had been using. Yes, I know there's a lot of different things out there you can use, but I thought that something like this would work well for what I was needing. Now that we've got that together, and we will just continue. We can see here that the, let's see here, make sure that I get this turned the proper way. This is going to go in between the two halves like this. Just trying to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So, okay, now then let's get this bolt started through this side as well. Now we've got the rear section put together. You can see it there. And one thing that we've got to do now is these braces. These cross braces are going to go toward the front of the rest. And you want to make sure that you put these in, or I should say that you put your rear one in prior to putting the uh, rest itself in, you know, prior to getting this in. You don't want to have both of these in and then come back trying to fumble around to get this put into place. So uh, the next step is to get these, or at least the back one put in. And again, it's just a couple of bolts according to the directions. Get it oriented properly. One thing that I'm going to do a little out of order is mounting this to the base itself. Uh, I think it is going to be a little easier to do this prior to having this mounted onto the rest. So that's what I'm going to do here. You do get the hardware. These pieces here, it's just a little easier to move this thing around to manipulate it and get it exactly where you need it to go. Of course, you've got this bar, this bracket here. It's going to slip through here and it's basically just going to clamp that rest together. Let's go ahead and get that done real quick just to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take out these screws. I'm going to slip this piece into this rubber piece, you know, your rest, this rubber portion. And just make sure that I get it turned properly. I did not have that turned properly because it does go just a certain way. You can see there the way that it's formed. And then the screws will come up from the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these started. Turn this around the right way. And I find, I think for me anyways, that this is going to be just a little easier to get these started by not having this mounted. And this is why I did not put this onto the base yet because I can turn it upside down. I don't know if you guys can see in the camera, kind of pinch the bracket with my fingers. You can see there I've got it slid through and getting those holes lined up and then dropping the screws in. And for me, I think it's just a little easier doing it this way instead of trying to fight with turning that whole thing upside down just to get the screws started. But uh, there's one of them started. I'm just gonna run it up just a bit. And once so I get that one started, pick up the other screw, drop it into place and run it up as well. But for me, I think it's just a little easier you know, getting this on first, that way you're not fumbling around with it so much, but just to each their own. Let me know which way you would prefer down in the comments below. Okay guys, there it is, mounted up. And I've left these on intentionally just to keep these uh, tabs from flopping around, these zip ties. Now we're gonna cut them off using one of my Benchmade knives. I'll put links to this down in the description below, guys, if any of you all are interested. I'm sure somebody's probably freaking out. I'm using a knife or something like this. But, you know, why do you buy a knife if you're not going to use it? Okay. So, we have everything else pretty much done. And get this out of the way. Get that zip tie off. This is now ready to set into position. And bear with me. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now we've got our locks here. This is what you're going to use to adjust the tension on this and get it locked in. 
once you are ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started as well. Now these, you're not necessarily gonna need to run down very tightly, but let's make sure of the order of our screws and our washers. And you can see here, I was about to make a mistake. So let's correct that real quick. Get this back up through that hole where it is supposed to be. Just like this. Should just be able to spin this on by hand. And again, guys, this is what you're going to use to lock this in place once you get this set to where you want it. I don't want to get it too tight because I want to be able to lock it down when I need to. You can use your tools. Okay, that's a little too tight there. A little too loose. I want that sticking out straight, so let's run this up just a bit. You don't want to get it too tight. You just want to have it snug. Just enough to keep this from sliding. I think it's going to be good. Now we're going to get the other side in. Now guys, we're ready for the last piece. This cross brace that goes through here. And then we will be ready to tighten everything up. Let's go ahead. And this is why uh, you don't want to put this in too early. Okay, you don't want to get both of these into place. And then find yourself having issues getting this into place. Okay, so now get this slid over. Get it lined up properly. I guess it would help if I unlock that. I don't have these other screws tight yet because I knew that this was going to be just a little bit of a stretch to get this in the way it's supposed to be. Don't force it guys, don't cross thread it and mess your rest up, you know, do it right. Get more enjoyment out of it. If you're having to force the screw, then you're not lined up properly and you need to make sure that you get it lined up properly or end up cross threading it. There we go. I'm gonna run these up and then tighten everything up and come back and look at it. All right guys, here it is. I've got my Ruger American Gen 2 setting in it with the Arkin Optics SHJ4. Uh, this is a very solid base. This is a gun that I have got a few videos on, so go back and check those out on my channel. And there's several things that I like about this. Again, this is the Caldwell Stinger shooting wrist. And up here, you've got this quick elevation adjust that you can see just how far, just with a little bit of a turn, how far that it will raise or lower the muzzle. And then back here, you can fine tune that adjustment. Okay, that's what you have back here. Very nice, very, very well made. And just to show you guys, let's set this over to the side. Now one thing about it before I take this off, uh, in the rear section of it here, if you have a, a sling stud, if you get your sling attached, you may need to detach that to get it set properly in there. But even here with my bipod on the front of this, and even though I have it up against that, I still have plenty of room. It sets in there just fine. So we'll set this out of the way, just like that. And this is why I wanted this particular rest. It's because I have the ability to put an AR-15 in there. Of course, this is one of my ARs. I actually did a build series on this particular gun uh, that is over on my website at boomsticktactical.com if you wanna go check that out. You have plenty of clearance here for that magazine. And just to go ahead and run this down, 
Now, if I have it out at the range or whatever, I've got plenty. You can see there, plenty of clearance for that magazine. And that's why I was wanting a rest like this. Works out very well. Anyways, guys, hope you liked the video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I will put links to everything you've seen here down there as well. I'll even throw some links to some of these scopes and other things down there too if you're interested. But guys, let me hear from you. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And guys, as always, we will see you next time.